Since the dawn of man on this continent, there has been a special relationship between the land and the people. Australian Aboriginal tribes evolved a unique form of survival over thousands of years. But recently, some have discovered that living close to the earth, a lifestyle that has sustained them in the past, now puts them at grave risk. Forty years ago, these and several hundred others from the Maralinga Jaruta people were told to leave their traditional lands on the Nullarbor Plain and ordered to walk some 200 miles into another tribe's area and told not to come back. The orders came from patrol guards working under British Army command. Today, they're still camped on the edges of their land, waiting for those orders to be reversed. They were moved so Britain could test atomic bombs. Indeed, invited to do so by the Commonwealth Government of Australia. It's an invitation that modern Australia now desperately regrets. Forty years later, the government cannot ignore Aboriginal land rights demands. The problem is that the land is poisoned. A recent survey has revealed scatterings of plutonium, the most deadly material known to man, over a much larger area than was thought when the British left. It's the most contaminated piece of land in the Western world. A couple of years ago, the Australians suggested a $100 million program to clear up the majority of the 4,000 square kilometer area. This left just a tenth of it fenced off forever, the area with the plutonium contamination, which would be uninhabitable for the next quarter of a million years anyway. And they asked the British to pay. The British said no, insisting that they were absolved from any further responsibility for contamination following a clean-up carried out back in 1967 called Operation Brumby. Furthermore, the British government announced in Parliament that the radiation risk of Maralinga was no greater than the risk to those living in areas of high background radiation, such as Cornwall in the south of England. Which is a thumbprint for plutonium. The team who were called in to re-examine the area five years ago were horrified at their findings. Mike Costello points to plutonium hotspots and describes the dangers for Aboriginals. Imagine an Aboriginal child is walking on this soil. He has a cut on his foot. He steps on this soil. The soil goes into the cut. The plutonium is absorbed into the blood and he receives a very heavy dose. A dose typically 500 times of that uh, of the average background. There's a lot about the Aboriginal lifestyle, say the scientists, that puts them at risk. Like the quantities of dust and their dogs, and the traditional way of making bread or damper using hot desert soil to cook it. This way of living was evolved over centuries in order to survive in an extraordinarily tough environment. Taking Aboriginal people off their land is like taking a, uh, a milk bottle away from a baby, a newborn baby. Tribal people, that's their, that's their land. It's sacred. It's, it's like a religion. It's you know, everything sacred, the trees and everything. Aboriginal leaders and their lawyers had been to London twice to plead their cause with British ministers. Each time they got a sympathetic hearing, but nothing else. Their lawyers believed that the more they were rejected in London, the more sympathy they got in Australia. They've been asking now since the Royal Commission finished in 1985, where can we go, where can we settle, where can we set up our communities? Uh, and, and they've been told until there's a clean-up, they will, they will never know. So it's now been eight years that they've been waiting to find out where they can plan their, uh, their future communities. The delay on the part of the British was seen as fueling Republican sentiments in this country. And this time, it was the Australian government that was definitely not amused. And perhaps that's why Her Majesty's government in Britain recently signed an agreement with Australia under which the British will pay $40 million to clean up the test sites. Ministers welcomed the resolution of this long-standing issue, an irritant in the relationship. But where does that leave the Maralingas? Nobody knows how long the clean-up will take. But even then, will they be able to live in a traditional manner on land rescued from nuclear contamination? Maybe no happy ending is possible for this story. Mm.